Okay, let's let's head let's head off over to the agenda. Um, so we've done our welcome and introductions, and then we have approval of the minutes. So these are the minutes from the July 18th meeting um, that were distributed. And the only change that I have heard uh, from was Sue suggesting that instead of saying agenda at the top of the of the um, page, it says meeting minutes. Oh, so I think that's a pretty reasonable suggestion. <laughs> yeah, I hope we don't have to vote on that. I think we can just <laughs> okay. So. Um, we can entertain a motion to approve these minutes. I so move. Second. Uh, all in okay. favor? Okay. Uh, unanimous. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the the major um, item for discussion uh, today is uh, around the Pecumtuck Ridge and ideas um, about the development of well, the preservation of the ridge, um, particularly with the uh, around the parcels owned by the town, and um, what we've been doing as a committee is uh, from the from our plan, we had five uh, pieces of property that were owned by the town that we thought were of recreational interest but did not have any kind of conservation restrictions on them. Uh, so they're owned by the town, um, but they don't have conservation restrictions. And so the, the five are the Pecumtuck Rock, which is where the towers are and where you have the views out across um, into the Deerfield Valley, the Pine Nook Memorial Forest, which is on Pine Nook, Steam Mill Forest, which is on Steam Mill, um, the Birchwood Nature Review, Refuge, which is um, off of Stage Road, and then also a piece of property that's on the Deerfield River off of Mill Valley, Mill Village Road. So um, all five of these are have lots of, uh, well, four of them, the, the ones on the ridge, which is Pecumtuck Rock, um, Pine Nook Forest, Steam Mill, and Birchwood, all have trails on them, all are in use, and all are connected to other trails like the Pecumtuck Ridge Trail um, across across the uh, entire uh, top. So, what I circulated to everybody was a um, a document that control that contains all of the research that we've done so far. And Sue Happ and Greg Henricks and I did the research. And for each piece of property, it discusses. Uh, the ownership when it came into the hands of the town um, talks about the trails on it. And then Greg did research on its biomapping, its resiliency, and um, uh, CAPS. I don't remember what CAPS stands for, but it's basically the connections of areas of interest for wildlife and um, <clears throat> protection of, of the land. So um, what we've found out as a whole is that, as we we thought, these don't have conservation restrictions, um, and they are definitely worthy of conservation restrictions and are of good great interest in terms of um, being a base for building a network trail network on the Pecumtuck Ridge. Um, so I guess that for as a first um, sort of thing, I'm just wondering if uh, any comments on that document and the research that's in it, things that you think you know stood out, or any holes in our analysis of what's going on with with those pieces of property. Well, I think the document's brilliant and incredible work done thank you so much very thorough um i Great. did I, I i um told you i i bumped into elaine uh i can't remember her last name from the franklin land trust d2 at, at, at the um d2 r2 and i said we followed your advice and went and did um the research about 
each of the pieces of land. And she said, that was great. And so I think that what you've done is um, it's really brilliant and a great step, you know, leap forward. Now let somebody else chat about that. Well, no, I agree. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of good information and illuminating and also uh, points pretty much to some things we have to take care of. <laughs> Such as? <laughs> <laughs> restrictions, restrictions. Restrictions, yeah. 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 Uh, just interesting how um, it almost feels like the ball got dropped in that the last step wasn't taken. On the other hand, we did now learn that the land has been owned by the town it's since between 1926 and 1976. I don't know when conservation commissions were created. So maybe it just was uh, not so much that the ball was dropped as, as in there was no next step uh, to take back in 1926 or 1976. So I, I think that's very true. I, I think in terms of when the town actually has a functioning conservation commission and um, and th there begins to be laws on the state books, um, particularly around um, wetlands and so on. I mean, we're talking probably the 80s, really, before mm -hmm. things start getting cranked up. And a lot of towns, even if... Even if they had uh, um, something on the on the books, uh, a lot of it w wasn't enforced. Uh, I think for many of the towns around here. <clears throat> Turning how old and the Franklin Land Trust itself, right? Franklin Deerfield Land Trust. Those were started in the eighties, right? So yeah, it wouldn't Frank even have been Franklin Land ahead. Trust has been around for quite a while. Um, yeah, but They've been working mostly in the north part of um, Franklin County and mm -hmm. with some attention to our area, but they concentrated particularly under the previous director with uh, agricultural lands and up in Conway, and, or not Conway, Coleraine and, and the towns up in there. Well, um, <laughs> Alan, so just just for your information, the the mystery speaker in the conference room is Sue Half. <laughs> <laughs> it just says conference room, Sue. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> Go ahead, Andrea. Um, I was going to say, Alan and I were in were were members of the Deerfield Land Trust Board of Directors in the '90s, and certainly that focused solely on Deerfield. Um, so it's not, it's not, and once uh, we merged with um, Franklin Land Trust, um, you know, we, it wasn't just Deerfield that was, um, that was being worked on. Oh, here we go. I'm trying to find the, I'm, I've got the Franklin Land Trust. They were established in 1987, the Franklin Land Trust. Yeah. So in 1976, there was no place, you know, to to go to say reserve this land forever so okay yeah so we have um uh i think a really nice um i think this document's really going to help us regardless grant writing um going to talk to people about getting conservation res restrictions we've already done um, a good chunk of the work that people would need to do to see if it's feasible to, you know, to do conservation restrictions. So we're, we're kind of got a all purpose document, I think here, that's gonna be useful in several different contexts. Yeah. Can I, the, Julie, the document is amazing. It's really wonderful. Um, so kudos to everybody who worked on it. Um, a question that I had is, is some of the research that we're doing is kind of looking at conservation restrictions. And um, now that we've looked at some conservation restrictions that have been around for several decades, they do sometimes pose uh, some problems for access or different types of uses over time. Um, so I guess I'm curious as to the 
I, I mean, I know of many of the interests in, in having conservation restrictions on property, um, arguably because, you know, it is required for a lot of state funding. Um, but are there other reasons that the committee is really, uh, really interested in conservation restrictions as, as a solution kind of at large? Um, very good question. I think we, at least I just recently, Alan knew this, but I didn't know that they were necessary for some of the funding projects. That's certainly um, of great interest because we'd like to do, you know, supported trail networks and mass trails and uh, community preservation funds um, as sources. Um, for me personally, and um, see if this makes sense, um, I think it's really important that these lands show up on maps as being permanently protected. Because if you look at a map of the Pocomtuck Ridge right now, um, the, the town owns these four quite important, reasonably large pieces that do not show up as being public access or being publicly mm -hmm. owned or being protected. And so if you add those, if we have the conservation restrictions and not only do we have the restriction, it's protected. And I don't know that there's a big difference. I mean, I don't think the town's gonna go out and develop those properties. So it's not like the conservation restriction is preventing development, but it would give you a, I think, start to contribute to a different view of the ridge about how much needs to be protected and where the you know where the puzzle pieces of the puzzle are that oh wow we already have that now what if we had this and this we'd have this you know and can I, I just wanted to add to let Emily know these are not the only lands that the town owns right right these yeah. these are the ones we believe have recreational um, value and also open space value so that they shouldn't be um, yes. uh, developed in the future. And the, the state, when we did the open space report, um, Alan and you know, um, and I were asked by Allison, "Are you sure these are not you know permanently protected?" And we had to go look, and they're not. And the state okay. was surprised. So, thank you, folks. So, Emily, do you have any concerns, um, like? Uh, going forward with conservation restrictions that would be we would place now um no and and I, I i do but i think that there's plenty of time to talk about that in the future and plenty of time to kind of like work around some of those concerns um i think that's a pretty significant requirement for funding at this point um and i don't think deerfield's unique in the position of kind of feeling like we need the conservation restriction in order to get the funds, unfortunately. I do think there's probably ways to get um, the land on certain maps without having a conservation restriction on it, um, but there's a certain feeling of security in knowing that a property will never be developed, um, especially if it has value to it and that the current tool for that in the state is the conservation restriction. So I think as long as like we're mindful going into it, conservation restrictions can be um, drafted with a, a lot of different language and um, kind of options built into it. So no, I think it's a, the best option we have. Okay. So um, we went ahead and um, coming out of the last meeting, one of the to-dos was to um, to check in with the Conservation Commission in the town and see what they were doing in terms of, um, you know, what was their awareness of these properties? What were they, were they on their radar to be managed or to be concerned with? And so Andrea um, arranged a call with Pete Law, who's the chair of the Conservation Commission. And Sue and Andrea and I um, met with, um, had a Zoom call um, to discuss what the Conservation Commission was doing. 
Um, and Andrea, can we turn to you to kind of discuss what, what happened on that call? So um, it was an interesting call. Again, this is this peeling of the onion. <laughs> it turns out that the Conservation Commission did not particularly have any of these pieces of land in their radar. Um, and in fact, just, just so that a little background, they were straight out with all kinds of repairs to roads in town because apparently the Conservation Commission had to be involved in that. So he was super busy running around town trying to help with, um, with, those, uh, with those things. So I think he will probably end up doing a little more research for us and coming back to us with some with some information about those pieces of property. But just for right now, he they don't um, they they haven't been thinking about them. The other important thing to know is that the Conservation Commission doesn't currently have bylaws. It has a list of conditions that it uses and applies to projects. None of those conditions include owning land. You know, if we said, okay, Conservation Commission, we want you to take over Pecumtuck Rock, they would not have the capacity, the capability to do that right now. And they are talking, they have been talking about writing bylaws, but that will not be a quick process. So, um, Pete um, basically said, well, we could look into some of this, but it won't happen quickly. And, mm -hmm. and so probably the, um, the best bet is to see if there's another entity in town that could take ownership. And part of the ownership includes management. And so that's part of the... Um, you know, kind of a catch, like who's actually going to be in charge of these lands, who's going to manage them. And that is not known, but since the Conservation Commission would normally be the right entity, but in its current setup, isn't, doesn't have the capacity. So <laughs> Julie, Sue, and I wrote a document to send forward to the select board saying, select board, the Conservation Commission can't currently take over ownership. Do you have a suggestion about what else could happen? And um, I think Julie's going to, you know, it's gonna go, um, she'll send it. Um, and we hope that we can end up on a select board agenda sometime in the near future to discuss that. Um, yeah. Can Alan, I what? ask? Uh, yeah, could, um, are you are you saying, um, Andrea, actual ownership, or are you talking about holding the conservation restriction? Holding the conservation restriction because yeah. the town owns the land. The town owns the land, right? But, but who can apply for the conservation restriction? Right, right. And normally, um, it would be the conservation commission, but they yeah. aren't able to do that. He said he would, um, I, there's an association of conservation commissions uh, in the state and also some of the towns around us, their conservation commissions are active in, in preservation or conservation restrictions. And he said he would do some um, looking around to see how they do that and, uh, and so on. Um, yeah, so, so when be... we meet with yeah, when we meet with the select board, it'd be very helpful for him to be there too. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah. I, did I I think Sue and Julie, did I kind of say what had happened at that meeting pretty much? Yeah, um, I think so. Um, if the conservation commission is not able to hold the conservation restriction, then a land trust can do that. Right. And, 
and be responsible for the stewardship, which is the uh, at least annual walking the property, making sure that people aren't dumping tires and you know all that sort of thing. Right, and when I was at the D2R2, again, I talked to um, Elaine and she said, oh, the land trust can hold such a uh, conservation restriction that if um, surveys need to be done, and I don't know that that would be the case since the town already owns the land, but I don't know what the process would be to get a conscom. She said, oh, you could apply to CPA or CPC for CPA funds. Um, if it's to make it permanent, I know you're only supposed to give CP, um, the CPC is only supposed to give money if it's already permanently restricted, but maybe, so I just don't know what the next steps are. So probably it would be important to talk to the select board um, and let, in case they say, oh, we absolutely want us to be the holders of the conservation restriction. I, I would be surprised, but just in case, I don't think we can assume that we can just bypass them. And um, if we, uh, if they, if the select board says, oh good, you, you've figured out that the land trust can hold that, great, go ahead. And then we meet with Elaine again and say, okay, now what are the specific steps? And or the town attorney. I have no idea if the town attorney needs to be involved. I, I... I, I would think that um, that that would probably be a, a step to follow up on in terms of uh, in terms of this. But uh, yeah, I think the, the situation and Emily can probably speak to this um, more fully than I can. But you know, one thing about about uh, the getting a conservation restriction is that there are these um, obligations for stewardship that uh, fall on. <clears throat> somebody and in the case of land trust it very often can be an expense that uh, they don't aren't really anxious to take on because they don't have operating budgets that uh, make that possible so there's ways to get around that and some of it is to find some funding they also make use of uh, volunteers that have been trained and all uh, and sometimes are assigned to specific pieces of, of land or property. So for example, we might be able to have a, a land trust holding the restriction, but there would be involved some agreement that a, I don't know, it could be even a volunteer committee in town or it could be individuals or something, but who have at least some bit of training uh, through a workshop with the land trust or wherever um, and would take this on on an, on an annual, you know, it isn't a, that big a deal once it's in place because it does basically involve walking the land once a year. And I think we could probably come up with committee members ourselves and others who could certainly be uh, participants in, <clears throat> in uh, doing that piece of a conservation uh, restriction. Um, and the Conservation Commission, by, by rights, I mean, I, I'm surprised. I, I didn't realize they didn't have any of their own bylaws. So they're just working with state and county or uh, whatever laws can apply. Yep. So it's mostly the Wetlands Protection Act, I guess. There's something yep. like that, right? Yep. And even before we, we met with um, Pete, I've been privy to other meetings. I can't even remember which ones, but it doesn't matter where they've been talking about, maybe we need to write bylaws. Maybe we need to write bylaws. Um, the planning board has been um, redoing, updating the bylaws for the planning board. It's taken months. So, yeah. and that's it's what the existing. So, yeah. so that's why I know it's just gonna take, take some time. Emily, do you have a hand up? Oh, you're, yes, you're... I do. And I'm not muted anymore. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so a couple of things. First, um, I just want to clarify, Andrea. So it sounds like in the original meeting with Elaine, she suggested that 
even though the town owns the land, the Conservation Commission, she still suggested that the Conservation Commission would be the holder of the easement. Is that right? Yeah. So, so not exactly. So what she told us to do was look at the original deeds to see what the intention of the person who sold the land to the town, why they did it. And the only piece of the only deed that said we are preserving this sent giving it to the conservation commission was the birchwood piece of land which which oh, was uh, given to the, the town or sold to the town i can't remember in 1976 they specifically mentioned the conservation commission that it was to be preserved for the public for public use the other um pieces of land nothing like that was said and so okay. she, the first thing was to try to figure out the intent. Why did the people give it to the town or sell it to the town? What was their intent? So right. we now we have now the research on that has been done. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so the origin of the idea that the Conservation Commission would be the holder of the, the restriction. Where did that originate from? Partly because I have questions. That that Birchmere, uh, Birchmere. Sorry, Birchwood, Birchmere, someplace else. The Birchwood um, Refuge deed okay. says this. Says yeah, yeah. Conservation. Yeah. So for that one deed, that makes sense to whatever extent the commission is, you know, allowed or able to. Um, the reason I ask is, um, and I wonder if Elaine alluded to this at all when you saw her at D2R2. Um, from in in some cases, the the fee owner, so the people who the person who owns the land and the conservation restriction conservation restriction holder, um, typically they can't be the same entity. Um, and so in this case, like if I own a hundred acres and I want to, I want to protect it, I'm not going to be the one that then enforces it. If that makes any sense. And so yeah, in this, I was going to say, but that's, that's when it's owned privately. This is town owned. How does yeah. that? Work? Uh, I don't, I can't think of any precedents off the top of my head. Um, but that's definitely a question I would bring up with Elaine, um, maybe even before making the assumption you're making any suggestion that we need to change conservation commission bylaws, I, although that seems like a good idea regardless. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I guess I would check in with Elaine to see if the conservation commission would be allowed to be the holder of the easement if the town is the fee owner. Um, Explain fee owner. I don't know that term. Yeah. Uh, so when we own property, there's a bundle of rights. Um, and that bundle of rights includes um, the ability to manage it, the, the ability to post it so people can't go on, the ability to make a lot of noise, the ability to drill. It's this like bundle of rights. Um, and so that the fee represents that like really big bundle of rights. Um, a conservation restriction is just one bundle, like one of the things being taken away. So the fee ownership is that one person. So like, I am the fee owner of this property. I own the, the fee, the, the deed, if that makes sense. Again, I understand, except it's, it's town owned. So it's still a fee per the legal system. Okay. So the town's um, the, the fee owner. The town is and, the fee owner. And yeah. the question is, normally you can't have the fee owner also be holding the conservation restriction right. and and policing themselves. Gotcha. Yeah, that's and, that. Yeah. Yeah, and, I would double check on that. And I, I think, think in, in I that think original, you, go ahead, Alan. No, I was just going to say, I think I think Emily uh, uh, put some real clarification on that. And that's my understanding too, is, is that I, I hadn't really thought about that as if the town owns the land, it seems to me probably the Conservation Commission, particularly if it had to do with some enforceable pieces of that land, like wetlands or something, probably could hold uh, the restriction. But that's an interesting point that we, we yeah, we'll have to consider is that who, who is the third party that uh, holds the yeah. restriction? So maybe yeah. it really makes sense for the land trust to do it, because that's completely a separate yes. non-town entity. Yes. Yeah, yeah I think we have a, so, a little, some more research to do here to, to find out, um, as Pete Law said, that 
you know, some of the are some towns do hold, at least he thought they did, you know, hold um, conservation. Uh, although, you know, maybe not conservation restrictions per se, but other sorts of um, protection statuses or whatever. Um, Is there a different, another status besides conservation restriction? Um, yeah, technically, but I don't think for grants um, that, that counts for a lot of the grants. Okay, so so we we'll want to do yeah. The oh. main thing for yeah for granting <clears throat> purposes with from the state or various agencies, federal or what have you, is that the the, the they just don't want to have uh, money invested in a project or program or or a property that then somehow becomes um, it, its use has changed in a way that would have affected the the amount of, uh, you know, the funds and their purpose. Mm -hmm. So so I wanted to ask, Julie, have you sent that, um, the thing we wrote to the select board yet? No. So, um, so I don't so think I don't... Alan and Alan Sue has seen that we were drafting it. Um, so what I what I thought was um, would be a a good step for the committee at this meeting would be to I would like it to be like formally in our minutes that we as a committee um, support and want to I don't know what the words would be but we want to support and push the establishment of conservation restrictions on these properties, all five of them. Um, mm -hmm. So the Open Space and Recreation Committee wants to uh, to do that. And um, we would, that would like, I don't know, be a, I don't know what you call it, resolution or something, but we're, we're basically saying that we have this is our judgment that this is the net, this is a good step that should be taken. Um, here's the research. So we would give them the research document. We, we, you know, here's the research we've done that yeah. supports this. And we think we should, uh, we should pursue this. Um, but we, uh, we want to have a conversation with the select board to have them say, yes, great idea, we should pursue this and have them uh, be supportive of us trying to figure out how to do it. Because if we, if, you know, we think it's a great idea, um, but we need, we need this, I think we need the select board to say, hey, that's a great idea. Right, because they're the ones that are going to be making the decision about whether this happens or not. I think, right? Right, and and I think that they, um, particularly since these properties are not um, prime prospects for uh, the sale by the town. Uh, so, in other words, if it, when I think I mentioned this at one of the previous meetings that. If the town can sell property that they own, um, they if in I think in the Deerfield laws, it's they have to bring it to town meeting, that so that the town citizens can uh, have a say on whether that land can be sold. These are not in particularly any jeopardy of being sold off by them, I don't think. But we can. I think there's even a way to have, um, I, and I know this can happen with even with getting state certain state grants is that uh, in some cases, so long as there is a restriction drafted mm. and in progress, um, there may be some eligibility then to receive, to receive state funds. So um, yeah, these are all pieces that I think are really good for us to agree on and get to the select board and um, if have them being, you know, so then it's a matter of public record that the, the uh, official, officials of the town have endorsed this process. 
that can go a long way just uh, to, make it, to begin with. Um, then, just, so, uh, I say, just so you know, I don't know if this would be appropriate in any way, shape or form, but there's a special town meeting on October 23rd. Yeah, that's right. So if there's something, I, I mean, you know, at special town meetings, there are warrants where people are, you know, townspeople are asked to vote on stuff. I don't know that we would want, we don't, we would need anything to be voted on, but it would be, I'm just trying to figure out how we would tell the public that we are. It might be a warrant. I think that's a good suggestion, Andrea. Um, it probably, it's possible we could have an, uh, a warrant that would specify these properties and ask, well, I don't know that it's necessary to get the, a vote from the town meeting um, right. since the town already owns it. But yeah, maybe something that um, informs people that uh, that this, this is um, in progress and desirable. So I, yeah, right. I don't know. And, yeah, and given that. that the next town meeting would be in you know April or May, and would certainly be way after the um, February 1st deadline for the <laughs> mass trails. Yeah. Uh, and also, also, it would be way beyond the CPC applications, right? Because we have to do that. That has to happen before March, right? So I'm just wondering if there's something, and maybe Chris, mm -hmm. as you're listening, <laughs> maybe um, we would want we would want some guidance, I don't know, from you maybe about if you see a warrant somewhere in this, in all of this information that we're, pre we're presenting. I don't, I don't know. I mean, we can, I don't know if you, you, if you saw the document that we were talking about, but. Did not, um, if you could send it to me via email, I'd be happy to take a look at it. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So the point is really, um, how could we how could we progress in getting this land protected <laughs> and and just how long it takes to do everything <laughs> um, it, it, I, I like the onion analogy that every time you think you've made progress there's another layer to go through yeah. um it's pretty familiar to us and I think this is definitely something I'd be happy to kind of discuss with council because i think it's a it's a okay. question of how to legally proceed um mm -hmm. yes. and determining if the restriction is something that can be imposed by the select board or if in fact we would need a town meeting vote of some variety um is something that i can have a conversation about with them great thank that you Kendria. Great. i will say that the the official final conservation restriction does need the select board approval so it needs there's a there's a signature line for the select board oh, right. um, but that's like that's a long long ways away <laughs> right but at the very least we got to get on a, um, a select board agenda to start the process okay. yeah the final signature is not the time to present it to them <laughs> not at all yeah I think a question that often comes up in these cases is what's the financial obligation of the town, right? So Alan touched on this, um, Andrea, you touched on it, even though you didn't maybe realize it, but like uh, if there's a survey, who has to cover the survey? It's typically the the town in this case, or like the, the private landowner in other cases. Um, so those are kind of questions that the select board may, may have. Right, but we do know that the CPC has some open space money, right? Because the um, uh, the two million bucks that um, was uh, earmarked for the park, um, uh, that one point five million has been clawed back because the park is not happening. There's money. I would uh, say it's not happening. The, 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 in in it's definitely in, on hold. The park as it was imagined. <laughs> yeah. It's not happening like that. And, and as far as I am aware, no other um, plans have been developed yet. So, right. uh, so we, and it's my understanding that, you know, like $25,000 a year from the CPC money was earmarked for open space. Yeah. <laughs> 
And we have claimed none of it for quite a while. Well, I think I think that um, I think that the CPC the C uh, uh, did approve for the tennis courts. I think that that money came. In fact, they asked for more money than the CPC had for open space because. But now, as you say, that th this has been released. There's now a new, a new, and in fact, it could be argued that that was all for open space and recreation. So we certainly have. Um, it's, it would be proper for us to uh, ask for some significant piece of that if it had to do with open space and recreation. That money that came back. And that would allow us to apply for the NAS trails. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, right. right. Okay. And I think in the longer term, you know, the, the distinction between, you know, having it, the conservation restriction and then the management plan, the management plan is going to be uh, separate and from, you know, discussions that, I've had with uh, Franklin Land Trust, um, they're very supportive of say trail networks, but they're not really in the trail network business. And I don't think, I mean, I, I, it'll be good, we'll need to find out, but I think ultimately it's going to come back as Alan, you were suggesting to some, you know, management mechanism within the town, um, like a, a trails, group and um yeah you know some sort of ad hoc or not ad hoc but um maybe volunteer organization right. to to manage the trails with help from other people because yeah that is working That's now in amherst uh, the amherst land trust has a stewardship committee that has a staff person, but the staff person is as a wrangler for uh, a substantial group of uh, volunteers yeah. who just like getting out there and doing that sort of thing. Great. And there's many people like Libby and Chris and me and everybody else who, who hikes up there a lot who were out there and we, you know, we, we have an eye on what's happening. It's, um, it's probably going to get more stewardship in a place, in a situation like this uh, than uh, most other, uh, yeah. Yeah. Kinds of property. Yeah. Okay. So um, let me see if where we're at. Um, I think so. Uh, I would like us to just, have a formal resolution at this meeting that we vote on. Um, and so if we can think of, I, I didn't um, draft anything, um, but it would be along the lines that the Open Space and Recreation Committee recommends to the town of Deerfield that um, these five properties that the town owns should, should come under permanent conservation restriction um, to protect them perpetually or forever. And um, and I don't know if we want to put in there and, and with a I with an uh, with the idea that they will be um, keystone parcels in the Pocumtuck Ridge Trail Network or something like that, that we, yeah. we want them for preservation, we want them for trails. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't, I, I, I was gonna, I was trying to think if I could phrase uh, the, the motion. It's, I think, I think, I mean, I'm willing to say that I move that the open space and recreation uh, Committee uh, of the Town of Deerfield request that the select board pursue conservation restrictions on each of the following parcels 
um, in order that uh, we'll be um, uh, able to develop trails and recreation opportunities and uh, be also eligible for state and uh, other, you know, grants. Okay, wait, wait. <laughs> I don't even know <laughs> if I can replace that. But, I mean, so, repeat yes. that, but. Yeah, trail system. That's where I, less, that's where I lost you. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. De 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 and other yeah. recreational opportunities, I said, or something like that. Uh, but, but I mean, I, that's only just to be expansive rather than uh the trail system is really the key piece right okay so what i've got is open space and recreation committee of deerfield requests that the select board pursue conservation restrictions on each of the five parcels listed so that we so that um a trail system system for recreational opportunities can be developed um and then something about grant um can be developed how about just leave it like that and how and, it's uh, and something about the eligibility and and, and, and uh, afford the possibility of or the afford the possibility of um yes funding uh, state of, funding and state their support grant funding okay okay Want me to read it again? <laughs> and then someone can. So can, maybe you can, you stick in after the five, uh, I don't know if I quite, after the five parcels are listed, I think you said for the development of a trail network, but to say for their preservation and the development of a trail network. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Now, are we asking the select board to pursue this? I mean, I think that's what this motion says. Right. Uh, so maybe not pursue, um, uh, endorse. No. How about endorse? Yes, like yes. Board endorses? Or approve. Yeah. Approves. I think, yeah, we want to make it as strong as possible because they are the ones that need to actually um, approve yeah uh, i yeah. Pr pursue get, does leave it a little bit more okay. uh like a, much, a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, that we oh, that they okay. approve these parcels for for their uh, preservation and for a trail network for uh, opportunity for recreational opportunities for uh, the development, sorry, of a trail oh, wow. network for recreational yeah. opportunities and um, possible, and, and uh, that's where I'm stuck again, sorry. <laughs> Hold on, I wrote a few things down. For the development of a trail system for recreational opportunities that can then be eligible for state funding opportunities. Okay, wait. Okay, good. I like that, but I missed. I missed it. <laughs> Say it again. Okay, that's okay. Um, the development of a trail, or whatever you have for recreational yeah. opportunities that can be eligible for state funding opportunities. So, yeah. do we need to say that they approve? They approve, going ahead. They, uh, approve the, the Open Space and Recreation Committee doing this, pursuing it, or it they can approve it, but that it doesn't so far say who's going to actually do anything. Uh, right. Maybe well, there's somewhere, somewhere <laughs> in there, could say, with the assistance of the Open Space and Recreation Committee. So, so we're, we're requesting it, but we're also, or we, are asking them to approve it, but we're also offering our assistance and and be eligible for state funding opportunities to be pursued by the open space committee. Yeah. Yes. Because everybody's overworked, and if it sounds yeah. to them as though they're going to have to get into the weeds on this, they're not going to like it. 
Conservation and Development of a Network of a Trail of a Trail Network for Recreational Opportunities that can be eligible for state funding opportunities to be pursued by the Open Space and Recreation Committee. Kind of a big um, no. I would say state funding programs so you don't have opportunity opportunity. Yep. Okay. okay, for state for state funding. It can be eligible for state funding. Yeah. I, I think the main thing is for us to get in the motion in in uh, in the minutes, um, but I but the final wording that we send to the select board doesn't I I wouldn't think would have to be exactly what we're what we're drafting. In other words, what we're doing is we're agreeing with a motion to submit this request to the select board, and um, that gives. People an opportunity to tweak this a little bit before it goes to the select board. I like that suggestion. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Shall I try? <laughs> I, I move that the Open Space Room Recreation Committee of Deerfield requests that the select board approve conservation restrictions on each of the five parcels listed for their preservation and for the development of a trail network for recreational opportunities that can be eligible for state funding to be pursued by the o by the open space and recreation committee yeah hallelujah yes second. Uh, second and let's vote and then because then i have to oh yeah all in favor raise your hand or say aye aye, aye. aye. And it uh, is passed unanimously. Great, that's a big accomplishment. That's good. That's I think we need that in our you know. I'm writing in our, in our, <laughs> in our <laughs> minutes, right. and um, and it also makes it public that this is an, something that's ongoing. That people, if they were reading minutes, they would uh, they would know that this is being yeah. pursued. All right. Excellent. Well, I'm sorry to uh, leave you all, but uh, good work. And uh, yeah. we'll see you uh, when I'm back in town. Okay. Thanks, Ellen. <laughs> You're back too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and and I leave on Friday <laughs> for two weeks. Oh, you do? Yeah. So. Okay. Well. That's good. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy uh -huh. your trip. Bye. Thank Bye. you. You too. So um, just to wrap it a little further, I, I, so we would have, we have the resolution that we're going to send to this, or this, we're going to send this request to the select board. We just um, approved doing that. We would um, include with it the document so that they have the research document that we've put together. Um, and, in the verbiage that goes along with it in an email, we would be, you know, requesting to meet with them to discuss further steps or something like that, or to get on the select board agenda. And then Chris, Chris will be uh, helping with some, some background on what the uh, town council says about, you know, what the procedure would be, what needs to be done. Um, and then we would be able to look at, uh, there may be other options like, you know, Franklin Land Trust, I think is a great option. There may be other options that come to light um, in the discussion in terms of who would hold the conservation restrictions. Um, we're, still, we're still in a exploratory stage at this point, but we have a lot of, um, you know, there's no, there, I don't think there's any skeletons in the closet in terms of who actually controls the property, how it came into the town. You know, somebody wants to start the process of uh, surveying, et cetera, they know exactly what we're talking about in terms of the, the land. Well, and two of those parcels do have included in the deed uh, what looks to me like survey because it's minutes and it's it's very very precise. Some of the others is a lot more wishy-washy. But 
Right. <laughs> Especially uh, what I guess Pine Nook and Pecuntuck Rock are of the nature of, you know, go to the big tree and then go to go to the fence and that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Great. Julie, I don't um I'm sure there's a lot that I don't know, but I guess I would um my question before about you know, why a conservation restriction, and it does make sense from a funding opportunity, but um, I think it might make sense to just in the presentation of it to the select board of just clarifying the importance and the reasoning behind the conservation restriction, um, kind of beyond just grant potential, um, since it is um, essentially taking the land off the tax rolls forever, which is a big deal for some folks. So yeah, again, you know, these have, yeah, these have already been off the tax rolls for totally. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, politically speaking, that that might be a an issue for some people to take it off forever. Um, I think I think there's also an opportunity to mention erosion and how important it is to protect land. Uh, I think that's a really great spot for it to be mentioned. So uh, but just the benefits of putting a conservation restriction on it might go a long way with uh, with that communication. Yeah. And and given where three of the pieces of land are and the horrible um, uh, you know, reaction, well, the horrible road situation um, in that vicinity, um, protecting the land and protecting the forest is super important. I don't think anyone's gonna argue with that. Has anyone been over to Pine Nook? It is, it's amazing what a mess it is. And, you know, got no trees to hold on to stuff. It's gonna get worse, so. Yeah. yeah, all of the um, the research on where this land falls in terms of environmental importance is is very solid and very strong. Yeah, and I would imagine that the um, that the select board would be really interested in that. So interested in a variety of things around the environment. I don't it'd be an easy sell. I think I think what happened is that the land was given to the town before you know before franklin land trust existed before the conservation commission existed and it just kind of fell through the cracks about finalizing this ownership and i think that um if we can get this done that would be a real accomplishment for the um for the open space committee so right. yeah I think I totally agree, Andrea. I think this is a really great opportunity. I think another thing in terms of development that I meant to mention before is not necessarily development of like residential because it's not necessarily prime for that, but also communications towers and stuff like the town will in the future be asked about communications towers and developing those and, and a conservation restriction is a tool that would presumably prevent that or limit that. Um, and so when we talk about erosion and trees, you know, being kind of this like really important tool uh, for climate change. Uh, uh, yeah, so totally, this is uh, a really good time for that. Great. Um, okay. Um, I don't know. I think we'll have to uh, uh, circle the wagons a bit before well, well, I think we can. We'll we'll make this step of sending the um, the thing to the select board, and I'll commu commu communicate with the committee about the final wording of how we the email that we were drafting and how we how we uh, how we give that resolution to them. Um, they'll need some time to react. I'm sure um, we can. I don't know if the October meeting is realistic. Um, I think we have still a lot of things to um, to figure out in terms of what would be the best um, the best steps or the best I guess the best strategy of what would be the best way to hold this hold this. What, do you think it would make sense to talk to Elaine now so that when we go into a meeting with Select Board, we could we'll have more information. Yeah, I think yeah, I do. I I can uh, I can do that. 
I think if nothing else to clarify, and maybe it's just an email, I don't know, but just to clarify mm -hmm. whether the Conservation Commission can indeed, you know, from the Division of Conservation Services, so they're the state entity that kind of oversees conservation easements, does the does DCS allow the Conservation Commission to hold the easement if the fee owner is the town? That's the question for Elaine. Okay, great. And I was going to ask if you would please, if when you send an email, either to Elaine or to the um, select board, could you see CC us so we oh, know? Certainly. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Great. Um, okay. So I think we'll we'll. Uh, That'll be our next step and we'll be trying to gather more information between now and our next meeting, um, which is uh, tentatively scheduled uh, for September 19th. Does that, is that agreeable to committee members? Not, not great for me, but if it's at if it's at three thirty, I, I can probably do it. I can do it three thirty to five. Okay, how about September twenty six? I'm flying back from Chicago. Don't think I'll be back in time. <laughs> okay, that won't work. Uh, but but I could but I could do the nineteenth. I can okay. do either. Okay, let's try the nineteenth at three thirty. That's a little tight. Yeah, no, actually that works just fine. Uh, so September 19th at 3.30, that will probably, uh, assuming nothing changes, that will be in person at Town Hall. Okay. 3.30. Okay. Shall I try to reserve this space or will some- That would be wonderful if you can okay. do that, Andrea. Okay. You said September 26th? Yeah. No, uh, no 19th. 19th. Okay. Yeah, that 3, should be. 3.30? Yeah, I can put that on the calendar right now. Oh, Great. thank, thank you. you. And you for the conference room? Great. Thank you. Sorry, I was muted. I said, yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I did have an item on here on the agenda update on new materials and town meeting. I haven't actually done that, but my intention is to send, um, I think Chris and I had a discussion, we could we could uh, do this. So we have, I have um, the clean final copy of the plan. We'll get that up. Um, there's a, a, what do they call those? Story map that can go up. And then I thought I would clean out some of the really old um, materials on there and put on some of the newer studies um, around the Kumtuk Rock. So, or, um, Julie, do you want to tell me again what those are, please? What those are? The, the, the things you're going to add to the website. I missed that. Oh, uh, the, the, um, the final plan, the story map for the final plan, and other new new studies okay thank you and then um i've been uh i'm now on the cpc uh committee and lily has a really nice google drive that she's developed for that group so I'm just going to copy what she did and we'll have a nice Google Drive that has all the stuff in one place. Okay, it's it's not called the Google Doc, it's called Google what? Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, it's a, a Google Drive, it's a Google Drive. Google Drive, Drive. thank you, that's yeah. right. I lost that yeah. word. <laughs> Yeah. Great. Okay. I think, um, and is, is there other business? 
I wanted to just say one little thing um, about the open meeting law. Yes. And if people, if um, Julie and Sue, um, you haven't had a chance to uh, watch it, I would encourage you to do that. Um, it, I learned interesting things like the fact that um, we know that meeting notice has to be given at least 48 hours in, um, in advance. Um, but apparently minutes don't have to be released to the public. They, um, they don't have to be listed on the, um, on the website. You can, we need to keep minutes, but if somebody um, asks for them, they have to request them. Um, mm -hmm. They should be up within three months, but they don't have to be up before, you know, before that. So that was an interesting thing to note. Um, Another was um, that comments from the, um, the public, sorry guys, um, you, we can specify what, um, what we expect of the people that, in terms of the time in the meeting that, uh, that the um, comments will be made, the, um, the place um, so wait, how much time, the place in the meeting, so what it, what part of the meeting they're in, and uh, the manner in which they're given. Are they given verbally? Are they given in writing? That we can um, have something to say about. We can't say anything about the content. People can say anything. And they can say it in any way. Um, we do, Deerfield um, Planning board, for example, has a statement that it makes at the beginning of its meeting, asking people to be courteous and to, and to the point, etc. But if people want to, the Supreme Court of Massachusetts determined that if people want to be a little belligerent or a lot belligerent, we have no control over that. We just we can be consistent and say, if we have public comment, everyone uh, may comment of a limit of two minutes, etc. We would be consistent with that. Not as much, not an issue for the open space committee. Big issue for planning board. <laughs> um, so I just wanted you to know about that. Another thing is we can never ever vote via email, which I wasn't aware. Um, so if we have a resolution, we can never do it via email. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else. And we need to identify uh, who speaks um, in our minutes if they are a member of the public. So I will be putting down Emily said, you know, so um, those are um, sort of the highlights that I took away from that, from that, um, that training. Also, there's a difference between a public body, which is um, the open space committee, the, um, the select board, the um, planning board, et cetera. And there's also an administrative body. So if the planning board creates a working group that's an administrative body and we don't have to um, post information about those meetings in pub, uh, to the public just as we have been following that's that's it great okay well um, thanks uh, thanks to all of you and we, we will uh, uh, I will. Do we need a motion to adjourn? Yes. Oh. Second. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay. We are adjourned. Thank you so much.